I'm John Miglosh, and today I'm going to talk to you about what it means to build a marketing database. I was having a very interesting conversation with a catalog owner a couple of weeks ago, and he said, it's interesting that you both build the database and do the analytics. He said, that's really unusual. I haven't found anyone else who does. And I said, I can't think of any other way to do it because if you try to do the analytics with someone else's data and you haven't gotten your hands dirty with it, you don't know what's in it, how in the world can you know if your analytics make any sense? And if you try to do the IT and the database build, but you don't have any analytical tools or skill, how can you tell if you did it right? So the two work hand in hand, they have to work together. And that's one of just many of the distinctives of a marketing database. So, what we're gonna talk about first is that back in the mid 90s when we started doing this, I got hired by the Bay up in Canada. And they, in uh, one of the largest accounting firms uh, in Canada, and we did a joint application development session. Okay, and we talked about the different fields and the file layouts and the specifications and what this thing needed to do. And frankly, uh, they sent me a pile of paper about four inches thick. And they said, not the accounting company, but the, the Bay said, could you look this over and tell us what you think of it? And I called them back and I said, you know, I can't bill you for it. I took a glance at it. I just couldn't in conscious, conscience spend that kind of time looking this through. Uh, I said, what you've got is an Eiffel Tower. And they said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you wanted a bridge uh, to, from here to there and you got something that looks a lot like a bridge, but it'll never get you from here to there. And they said, that's what we thought too. So they hired us. And so we basically threw out the document and we said, no, let's try building it first. Ready, fire, aim. We used to have a sign like that in our, in our uh, company. So first we took the data and then we put it in the base. <laughs> and we mainly use three, three things. We use customers, we use orders, and we use usually some kind of inventory master file to make sense of it. And so it's very straightforward at the beginning. It gets much, much, much more complicated as we go, but if you want to know how to make sense of big data, and maybe we'll put that as a tag on this video, uh, big data, if you're not trying to sell something, if you're not making an offer, you'll never pay off your big data. So in that spirit, let's start with that as our core feature. Now we also throw a couple of hundred geodemographic variables at it and all kinds of other stuff that we've got laying around. But the key is customers and transactions. For the Hudson Bay, we had about 15 million customers and about 300 million transactions, which was great. You know, a great place to start. Experian and, and Epsilon and those guys, you know, we came and spoke at the database conferences and they would have me go first. They said, we don't have near that much data in our stuff and you have uh, it all on a PC, which we did, all relational. Okay, so the first principle is that you start with the data when you build a marketing database. Let's not start with speculation. It's bad enough as it, as it is. Now, when we're doing this, of course, we're gonna use the inventory master file and other things to make sense of those transactions. But before we do, we really wanna focus on the customers because most of the database companies that exist today were built on what's called merge purge, okay? And merge purge was the idea that it's better to mail two catalogs to two households than it is to mail two catalogs to one household on the same day, at the same time, same person. And the idea was that you double your chances of getting an order if you mail to that second household instead of two at the same time. So anyway, we were testing people and so we tested that hypothesis and it never did raise the response rate except in one regard, which was the number of complaints we got about how many catalogs were going to some some person on the same day. And so I'm not advocating that you stop doing it, but the problem is that in that mindset, you're better off purging than merging. <laughs> because if you merge, you got the risk of two catalogs going to the same household. You think that 
but if you mer purge it, then one gets sent off somewhere else. Now, in, when you load the customers, the mindset has to be completely different. And in fact, we use German software because we couldn't find any good software to do this in the United States because it's so address focused. And it's so, it's so, mm, 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 mm. it's just, it's not, it doesn't work right. Uh, and what we have to do is we have to take those customers and we have to see, uh, because especially with e-commerce, you'll get, you'll get five or six customers and, and they'll all be different because every time you order, you get a new customer ID on the website because people don't want to give you the, you know, they don't want to log into your site. They just want to buy the stuff. They don't want to give, keep your credit card on there. So there's no way to, to hook them together as, as they look like they're hooked together here. And so now they haven't bought, it looks like this guy just bought in the last year, but these guys look like they haven't bought in the last four or five, okay? Because they're not connected. Well, you got to connect them. And we've gotten very good at that. And so the first principle in a marketing database is you got to connect them. Because what you're looking for is you're looking for patterns in time. You want to see the customer that stays with you. You want to see that. You want to see that this is not five customers, but it's one really good customer, okay? Who's ordered five times. See that? That's a crucial distinction. So we got two crucial distinctions of a marketing database and then I'll let you go for today. The first is we start with the data, not the specification. If you call me up and tell me you want one, I'll give you a five page piece of paper. And I just sent one to a, uh, to a company the other day and they said, their IT, set, their IT department said, hey, we could do that. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, I know, because all we're asking for is the customers and the orders. Okay, and the second thing is, that the marketing database has to deal with time. And in order to deal with time, we have to figure out the right way to treat our customers. And almost no one is even thinking about this. They're just purging them around and trying to make it semi-clean. We got plenty of storage, let's build big data, let's make a big landfill, and we'll let the analytic guys figure it out. Doesn't work. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of what a marketing database is. Got much more to add to it. I'm John Miglosh, have fun with your data.